Hey everybody, I'm back! Oh, yeah, this one... Yeah, we're gonna start this year off real weird. Yeah. So, the first video I wanted to do for 2017 was about our impending doom of a Donald Trump presidency. So I figured today I would talk about death. Uh, always a fun topic. And something I've been thinking about too much, uh, but not for weird reasons that you might think, because I've been playing a lot of Bloodborne, um, and I think Bloodborne is one of the most fascinating games on paper. I feel like if you didn't play games and you weren't in the industry, you would come and you would look at this game and think, what the fuck? Mostly because Bloodborne is centrally about dying, um, and I think that is very cool and neat that a game, uh, sort of being the most recent major art form can be about dying, which is something that books and poetry like Sylvia Plath and, and movies and TV shows and stuff, they can they can be about death. Um, and for some reason, games, despite the amount of dying you do in them, they haven't really been about that. Only sort of recently have games sort of touched on those subjects, like uh, The Beginner's Guide and The Stanley Parable and That Dragon Cancer. Um, I mean, it's weird that it's like a central mechanic of games is dying, and you do it over and over and over again, and yet I think the sort of impact of, of death uh, is mitigated, because so often games just sort of make it like, oh, you, you messed up, you failed, let's go back and try it again and do it better. Um, but I think some games sort of explore death in, in interesting ways, but Bloodborne is literally about dying. Like, that is the theme, that is the core mechanic, that's the story, that's the plot, that's everything. Um, and I guess, for me, that is so cool because if you look now, uh, this is a painting that I really love. It's called Ophelia by Millier, and it is about the character Ophelia, um, who I guess is like one of the most notorious for dying, uh, of being suicidal. And this is uh, Gustav Klimt's Hope 2, which is about uh, the fear of your baby dying when you are pregnant. Um, I really love this painting, and it finally struck me that, like, I can like games that deal with death for the same reasons I like other art forms that deal with death. Um, and so, I find it fascinating that, that Bloodborne, uh, is a game that, like, the very basic plot, if you look at the lore, you look at, like, what's going on in the world of Yarnum and, and what your character's there to do, and what all the other characters in the world, uh, are sort of dealing with, is, is... People come to Yarnum, which is this weird hub of, like, scientific progress, just to cure their afflictions. Like, there's a remedy people are working on with blood in Yarnum, and everyone wants to sort of, ch not cheat death, but just, like, not die. Everyone wants to come there and use the pale blood to sort of solve their, their diseases or whatever, and then it sort of turns on them, and there's a plague, and everyone's turning into monsters, and besides all the weird ancient alien stuff going on, um, there's this message of, like, you know, trying to not make a deal with the devil and sort of getting burned, but it's just, like, trying to, like, m mess with, like, getting around mortality and, and that backfiring, and then you become something even worse. Um, and I, I think it's sort of cool that, like, the game really relies on a lot of... Um, you know, folklore and and old stories and tales of monsters and demons and creatures, and it uses like old Victorian era literature in the architecture and and in the world and then the the setting and the the mood and the music and all this other cool stuff. Uh, but mostly, like you're there to to beat up a bunch of monsters, and the monsters are there to try to kill you. Just straight up. They're not there to rob you. They're not there to make you feel sad. They're, you know, there's no other goal than you kill the monster. The monster tries to kill you. And the reason that, that kids are afraid of a boogie monster in their room or they're afraid of, you know, bears in the wild or snake bites or I hate spiders because those things are trying to kill you. It's the fear of death. That's, that's literally what it is. It is the fear of death personified. Um... And, and there's just this really cool thing going on in Bloodborne about this, like, there's just this anxiety 
about not dying and trying to find the pale blood or whatever to fix whatever's going on. Um, and, and there's this whole, like, religious afterlife thing about, like, punishment, and there's churches in the games, and there's all this other stuff going on. Uh, but it, I, I find it kind of interesting that, like, Bloodborne and the other Souls games rely so much on religion as a sort of crux that they use in, in interesting ways uh, to mess with the, the mythology of, of, of the world and the story and the characters. Um, and also, I guess, just in turn by proxy, the Souls games and Bloodborne have basically turned into a religion. Like, you have to convert. It's so strange. Like, you have to be just drenched in it and, and something sort of clicks. And then it is just this, like, religious, like, oh my god, I had this out-of-body experience. Like, now I understand it. Now I'm, like, a part of this group of people who are really into this one thing. <laughs> um, it is so it is so peculiar the way it works. But, um, but Bloodborne was able to do it. Bloodborne is a game that is just able to sort of flip that switch... Uh, at least for a, uh, you know a bunch of people. It's not for everybody. I get it. That makes sense. Um, it's very difficult. Um, but I just I just really like that the game designers and, and Miyazaki, who's the lead director, sort of just sat down and went like, okay, like I just want to make the central mechanic and the theme, and and I want to design everything around dying and trying to not die. So if you get hit, you can sort of like aggressively counter attack an enemy and gain your health back so it's like you're just sort of clawing back at life to try to just not die and uh i always really appreciate uh that the souls games and bloodborne i don't want to call it soulsborne that sounds so reductive but i guess i'll just do that for the sake of uh brevity um they respect player death in a way that gives it a lot of significance and impact, and I'm not the first person to make a video about this, obviously, but I just really find it interesting that there are some games that really sort of play with the idea of like, okay, your character is going to die, and instead of you losing a life or going back to the start or, or reloading a checkpoint, like how can we make it more important that you not die or learn from your deaths or, or make your deaths worth something when you go back and you collect all your blood echoes or souls? Um, you know, how do we... How do we take the idea of dying and make it like a sort of check marker that goes across the levels um i i just think that is the coolest thing to 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 do and when you look at famous game designers and, and very popular in a very critically acclaimed great games uh they sort of take this fundamental idea and they just sort of spin everything else around it uh famously nintendo and miyamoto uh does this i actually have a quote so I'm going to quote Miyamoto. We get the fundamentals solid first, then we do as much with that core concept as our time and ambition will allow. Uh, and Mark Brown of Game Maker's Toolkit, uh, that, those series of videos are amazing. You should go watch those. I'll probably link it in the description. Uh, but he's, he's touched on this as well. Like, You take a central thing and you basically just spin the story and the setting and the music and the character design the art everything comes from that one central core thing and for mario it's jumping and for bloodborne it's dying um and i think that's really great that that's the central thing you're dealing with in the game as a player and that's also the central thing that other characters are dealing with and that is sort of just what everyone is all in a tizzy about in, in bloodborne um and I think more games should explore that, uh, or explore something in a similar way, where they sort of take a, a central uh, idea or philosophy, and they really just sort of spin everything else uh, around it, whether it be the gameplay or, or, or the plot or the premise or, or stuff like that. So instead of sort of just taking a sequel and saying, okay, what happens to Nathan Drake now? What happens in the next Call of Duty? Where can we set the next battlefield? Um, the core idea of a game could be just something else. It could be just some cool thing, something you're doing, something you're trying to find. Uh, with Splatoon, it's ink. So everything is about shooting ink and being in ink and recharging your guns while you're in ink mode and the characters being squid people and like that's fucking brilliant. Um, or Gone Home, there's just like a central mystery and so everything you're doing is uncovering a mystery. You're sort of revealing the layers of who you are and who your family is and what they're hiding and, and and the mysteries of this house and the mystery of why these people are gone and gone home like taking 
other ideas and and making games about them instead of just being about uh you know far cry is now set in this location and again i love the far cry game something against them but like sometimes you can sort of just tell that a game is taking an engine and gameplay and the same sort of tools and just sort of like repurposing them and reskinning them which again there's nothing wrong with that necessarily it can be done really well um but uh but sometimes a game can sort of rise uh, out of the gazillions of games coming out every day, and it does something really amazing. Uh, and I think Bloodborne is one of those games that does that. So, you know, besides, I could go on and on about, like, the visual design and the art direction and the level design and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I just wanted to sort of give props to uh, a game that does something different and sort of touches on something that most games don't or take for granted, which is dying. Um, and again, I don't want to sort of rehash uh, what other people have said better than I have uh, about, you know, other games that do dying differently, like roguelikes or Zombie U. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of other examples about games that do that uh, very well. But um, I definitely think that Bloodborne is, is something to, you know, praise, something to hold up. And I hope that... Uh, Instead of there being a sequel that just sort of just does more Bloodborne, I hope maybe they do something even more different. Set it somewhere even newer and just complete, like, just keep changing what the game is about because every game needs to be different. And I feel like that's what sets things apart and that's what makes games really great. Is instead of just sort of being like Dark Souls 2, but this time, hey guys, your health bar goes down every time you die. Like, that's, that's a stupid decision. I mean, it's more Dark Souls. That's why no one likes Dark Souls 2. Um, but Bloodborne is not just a sequel to Dark Souls. It is its own thing, even though it is very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, those games feel different. They play different. Uh, they look different. Um, and despite the similarities, the differences are really what sets everything apart. So there you go. That is my little rant. I guess. Uh, I'm going to try to make more of these videos this year. I hope you enjoy. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Jared Russo. And uh, I will see you the next time, hopefully, if we don't all die before then because Donald Trump set off nukes. <laughs> <laughs>